So there comes a point when you have to rid yourself of yourself in order to truly connect to something grander. If you're looking to actually connect to that one essence of the grand scheme of it all, the thing that we call creation, remember there is no creator. The creator is creation. It is one in the same. That is the one. And you experience it twofold because we're in the world of opposites and you're in the world of things coupling. And so in this life, you experience it as a body, which you know and you perceive as coming from your parents and coming from the earth and coming from stardust and actual material. And then you have your consciousness, which many people perceive as, some call it an ego, some perceive it as uh, an alien who is basically occupying space behind your eyes and is taking in all of your sensory perceptions and that that thing, when your physical body dies, that thing pops out and escapes and goes somewhere. But these are just the coupled illusions of that one, that one creation the creation that is the creator. And to get there, you have basically two paths. You have that blissful exaltation that some gurus or some shamans or some sages experience. It is this reality, as is said in Eastern philosophy, what it's like to experience this nirvana is it's like normal life, but experienced one inch off the ground, that there is an element of sort of floating that's happening. And so there is that, which is this very sort of vibrant experience that sheds you of everything else, that you are no longer identifiable to yourself or to others with that body and that spark of consciousness. You are that pure creation, and you have a clear vision of that. But the other way, the way that I think is more attainable for most people, or maybe is a stepping stone toward that exaltation, is to see that it is all a game and an illusion and a drama that's being played for the sake of experience and enjoyment and trickery that you have put yourself here in all of the experiences that you have had and met all the people whom you have met for the purpose of having that unique experience. And it's all to play a trick on yourself, to fool yourself into believing that this is very serious and very real and that you must get X, Y, or Z out of it. And in that way, you keep yourself really entrenched in the illusion. That's how the illusion becomes impactful. It's like when you watch a great movie and you are moved to tears or you have that feeling in the pit of your stomach or you can't stop laughing. You know that it is an illusion. It is something that's happening that's scripted on the stage or on the movie screen. But still, even with that very clear knowledge, you have that visceral reaction to it. It is the same as what's happening here. And so if you can realize that, and you can sometimes let yourself get lost in it, but then also acknowledge, oh, I'm having this very human experience. If you're me, I'm having this very Dan experience. But it is just that. It is just an illusory experience. And I'm not going to get too deep down into the into the foundation of it and say, this is who I am and this is what I've become and this is how the world is. Those things aren't any of the experience that you're having. It is a perception and it is a play and it is a quality of experience that you are having, but nothing beyond that. And so enjoy it. And let go of some of the seriousness of it all. And if you do find yourself getting caught up in it, the way to rid yourself of it is to notice that and say, oh, wow, I've done such a good job 
of convincing myself how real and important this is right now. And in that way, you can be one step closer to that exaltation that the sages and the swamis and the gurus sometimes purport to experience, being that one with the creator, which is creation.